has a tricky product up his sleeve to convince Mr. Bond to drive a not so low slow sports car but a high ground clearance SUV. They have the experience to come up with sporty and handsome looking sports cars which have the niche of their own. But how about an Aston Martin SUV? Well, I am here to tell you about a Bond car which he hasn't driven yet. It carries more macho and swag than the slow swan sports cars he has been driving till now. It's the Aston Martin DBX. Well, the DBX has a lot on its shoulders. It's your first SUV and it needs to be a proper Aston Martin to its core. It needs to stand by what the brand really stands for. And it needs to be distinctly different from any other Aston Martin present till date. The DBX must have this warm and glamour of a sports car, while being macho and practical like an SUV. This is the reason why Aston Martin came up with the brand new platform for the DBX and even borrowed the best in industry engine for this SUV. This shows how vital this car is for Aston Martin. Plus, James Bond is a client on their list and they need to convince him to drive this in Aston. Now the DBX actually competes directly with Lamborghini Urus. Let's start with the design. DBX actually looks like a proper Aston Martin. The grille resembles the Aston Martin DB11 and it's the largest grill to have been fitted on any other Aston Martin till date. Similarly for the badge, the badge is also the largest for any other Aston. Here we have the DRLs which surround the cooling duct. It sends the air towards the brakes and even reduces the drag. The DRLs even act as indicators. The stripes on the hood also point towards the logo which has also been seen on the Aston Martin DB11. Now there are the 22 inch alloy wheels and just above them are the side darts which actually let the air flow from the side towards the rear of the car. There are side strikes which actually resemble the Aston Martin DB11. When you come towards the side we actually see that the door handles are flush and in sync with the design. The doors also get framed as windows. And the other aspect that you need to know is the hunch on the bottom of the door which actually prevents any dirt or snow to touch the sill of the door which prevents your pants to actually get dirty. Coming towards the rear, the roof tapers off and there is a sporty looking spoiler which has two major advantages. One is it increases the downforce but actually sends the air down the windscreen in such a manner that you don't really need rear wipers. Now coming towards the ducktail spoiler, this is actually taken up from the Aston Martin Vantage and it makes its way on the DBX. It does look sporty and one can easily misjudge it as the Aston Martin Vantage at night. The tail lamps are sleek and are connected with a light bar at the center which acts as the brake lights. This bumper is sporty and gets two exhaust pipes. Looking at the profile, I can definitely say that the DBX looks like a proper sports car like SUV, unlike the Porsche Cayenne or the Lamborghini Urus. Aston Martin has done a phenomenal job in terms of design. Now let me show you the interiors. The first thing that you notice is that the doors are quite small but they open quite wide. The other part that is important to note is that the ingress is very easy. You actually need to slide in rather than jump in like in other conventional SUVs. Now, if you are a tall and heavy guy, would you actually fit in a sports car? 
Well, that's not the case with the DBX. It gets loads of space, there is plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom, it's wide enough and it can fit all kinds of people. The tall, heavy, small, slim, all kinds of people can actually fit and be comfy in the interiors of DBX. And that hasn't been the case with the other Aston Martins till date. Here you get easy controls for the seat, you get a comfortable driving position and a great view ahead. The seat is electrically adjustable with memory functions and even the steering is electrically adjustable for brake and reach. The interiors are sumptuous and it is filled with leather on the seats, on the dashboard, on the doors, everywhere. The interiors are elegant and the sweeping center console is actually finished in leather across. On the top do you find the PRND gear selectors which the shorter drivers do need to stretch a bit to use them. On the back of the steering wheel are metal paddle shifters to manually change the gears. All the controls are present on the center console with the hill descent control, the suspension settings, the drive modes, the auto start stop settings, the uh, lane departure warning, the 360 degree camera all are present here itself. The 10.5 inch infotainment system handles all the functions related to drive modes, the uh, automatic climate control, navigation, communication, connectivity, everything is handled through this 10.5 inch infotainment system. Now if you have used a Mercedes Benz infotainment system before, you will find it very similar as this is also borrowed from a Mercedes Benz. This is the old MBUX system. Now, if you touch and touch this infotainment system, it won't respond because it's not a touchscreen infotainment system. Everything is handled through this touchpad on the center console, which is also similar to the older Mercedes-Benz models. It gets popular features such as Apple CarPlay and navigation, 14 speaker uh, audio system, you get uh, you know multiple uh, USB sockets but it misses out on Android Auto. Under the armrest is a spacious storage box. It gets 12 VSRC socket, 2 USB sockets and an SD card reader. Just above it is a dual cup holder or a bottle holder. Talking about the bottle holder you can actually fit some in the door pads as well. Just above this is the key holder in the center console. I feel it should have been more snug as it might tend to move when the car is in motion. Just underneath the center console is a very interesting storage space. It gets a phone tray and the phone tends to move around as it is leather finish and it's slippery but there's a lot of space inside. The compartment also comprises of a boot release button. Not only finding it is difficult, but reaching out to it is another factor. And the steering wheel uh, looks elegant as well as stylish. It gets controls for the audio system, the connectivity features, lane keep assist, automatic cruise control on both the sides. Just on the back side is a 12.3 inch screen which acts as the speedometer and the tachometer as well as a multi-information display. Hmm. There's a nice medium sized glove box as well with illumination. There's good vision at the front and the sides all thanks to the low waistline and the big windows. The seats are comfortable and gives a very good view at the front. The view at the back is slightly cramped due to the sloping roofline and the smaller windscreen. But that is solved with the all around parking sensors and the 360 degree camera. In terms of quality, DBX looks like a proper Aston Martin. 
you will find soft touch leather all around even the speaker covers are having perforated leather trim it is this quality that actually enhances the perceived value of the dbx suv by now let us have a look at the rear now the doors open wide enough the sill is actually low and you easily slide in without any uh, discomfort now having a look at the real estate there's acres of space you have a lot of leg room even a 6 feet person can sit behind a 6 feet driver there is a lot of headroom even though the roof tapers off at the rear there is a panoramic sunroof mix which makes the rear even more roomier now there is ample of shoulder room which makes it easy for three adults to seat at the back even though the seats do not have any slide or recline function but they are comfortable for all the deep passengers also the rear passengers get climate control panel with rear ac vents and usb ports in the center the center armrest accommodates cup holders and the center seat can also have a 2 plus 2 seating option and you would be surprised to see the boot never has any aston martin been so practical It gets a massive 632 liter of boot, which is more than that of Porsche Cayenne Coupe, Lamborghini Urus, Bente Bentega, or a Range Rover. Ever thought that an Aston Martin can be so practical? Now you can actually slide in your bags because of the low lid, and you can also slide the rear seats down by using the buttons inside the boot. Even though the engine says it's a Aston Martin built in wheels, but it is a German engine. It's the AMG engine with 4.0 litre V8 engine with 550 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. The engine is mated to a 9 speed automatic transmission which transfers all the power to a 4 wheel transfer case. The 2200 kilo SUV pulls from 0 to 100 in 4.5 seconds and the top speed is limited to 290 km per hour. The DBS uses electronically controls central differential which can send 50% of the power to the rear wheels or 100% power to the rear wheels in sports mode. It also gives limited shift differential at the rear to improve the power between the two rear wheels. The DBX also gets drive modes, GT, Sport and Sport Plus. Sport mode lowers the car by 15mm and Sport Plus mode lowers the car by 30mm. It also gets two off-road drive modes which is Terrain and Terrain Plus. Terrain mode lifts the car by 15mm and Terrain Plus lifts the car by 45mm. DBX even gets air suspension and you can rear all over the SUV in seconds. You can lower the SUV by almost 50mm or raise it by 50mm for off-road purpose or for making the boot luggage loading easier. This can also be done from the boot as well. And it is expected to start at an actual price of 3.44 crores in India. The DBS has a panache, it is glamorous, it is sporty, and after 106 years, Aston Martin has come up with a remarkable SUV. Whether or not Aston Martin's top line Jane Bond would drive it or not is a question to be answered. Will it shake the market or will it make it stir is also to be seen. Thank you and like the video and please subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.